Hey, welcome to On Top and Hot. Yeah, in case you thought it was somebody else, it's me, John Zadar, under this stocking cap. And this is Wednesday, December 7th. Now, as we do every day, we're going to look at some hot OTC and penny stocks because that's what I primarily trade through the day. But as you've probably already guessed, I'm not just trading through the day. I'm doing a lot of research. I'm reading 8Ks. I'm going to Twitter. I'm visiting other forums. And of course, I'm looking at news. Now, that's news I've looked at over the last six days. It's all from the OTC. Your oldest is at the top. Your newest is at the bottom. I've even snuck in a few 8Ks in there. Bet you can't guess which ones they are. There's a lot of prime news in there. Honestly, you've got mergers, acquisitions, uplistings, all the juicy stuff. So take your time looking at that. But I just don't research OTC stocks. I research penny stocks too. And there is a difference. Penny stock is any stock under five bucks, regardless of what market it's on. And you know, there's a ton of those on the major exchanges. So we could be looking at any one of those markets. They all qualify as penny stocks if they're under five bucks. Now, when I'm doing my research on OTC stocks specifically, I'm using this site. Guaranteed, this is where I start 100% of the time because it's updated every single day by Fiener and the SEC. Why should I go searching for that information when I know where it's at? Do I go searching for the milk in the house? No. Does anyone else even have to search for it? No. We all know where the milk is at. So now that you know where the current information is, start here. If you can't find the milk here, then check under the sink. All right, let's take a look at how our OTC market finished today. Refresh this. Oh, it looks pretty good right now. Let's hope for a more bump. No, nope, that's about it, but that's not too bad. Our dollar volume did fall, didn't it? Sure did. We fell from our old ancient high of 2.1 billion. We're now back down to 1.6 billion. But our share volume has been steadily increasing, not at any great rate, but it is getting bigger. We saw it at 7.8 yesterday, and I was thinking it should break 8. Voila, we got our 8. Our trades has fallen again. We did break 300,000 for the second time this month. We just stuck between 250 and 300. And as you can see, we have just moseyed right on back into the ditch. We're at 274,000 trades. So it is a slow market, but there's a lot happening right now. We've been looking at a lot of hot stocks here recently, and you know what? They're still hot. So we're gonna look at them some more. We've got more information that clarifies some things, and we'll look at some new stuff as well. Come on, I'll show you what I got. A little razzmatazz, and we're looking at our NAS. Give me a break, I'm trying here. This is Transcode Therapeutic Inc. This is a penny stock on the NASDAQ. Now this company did have some filings come out here recently, but yesterday they came out with the news press with regard to those filings. And it is good news, but I'm surprised that the stock actually jumped on it. Though they did have news at the end of November, which I thought was bigger news. But whatever the reason, the stock caught a lot of attention today and was putting out some strong gains. She finished today just under a buck at 98 cents with over 133% gains. Now, with regard to that price, when we're talking about major exchange stocks, New York Stock Exchange, NASDAQ, they have minimum bid price requirements. That means that their bid price cannot go under a dollar for too long. If they stay under a dollar too long, they can literally be yanked off of the major exchanges and thrown down to the dungeon. The OTC markets happens all the time. Now, I haven't seen any red flags for this. I'm just letting you know, FYI. So what does Transcode Therapeutics do? We're jumping into a most recent news press. We get this. Transcode is an RNA oncology company created on the belief that cancer can be more effectively treated using RNA therapeutics. The company has created a platform of drug candidates designed to target a variety of tumor types with the objective of significantly improving patient outcomes. Pretty serious business. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Well, <laughs> I didn't think that it would get that much attention. Like I said, it is good news, but it really isn't a material change. And still the price went up. She went from 1.4 million shares a day to over 113 million. That's a lot of extra attention. Share structure. 
we got a low outstanding share count. This is only 12 million, 13 million, let's call it. I went out and looked, found lots of sites that all agreed on the same number, so we're gonna go with it. It is just a little over 8 million in the float. So we do have a low float on this stock. What are the financials for this NASDAQ stock? Ooh, we got nothing on the annual, and the quarterly, we got nothing neither. Ooh, I'd be more concerned about this than anything else. You know, being on the major exchange, they have a lot of minimum requirements. They have to have so many shareholders. They have to have so much share value per share. I'll bet that they have minimum revenue requirements. And you know, even beyond that, if we haven't seen any money ever, I'd be worried about bankruptcy. It's something to think about. So they are in bad shape financially. Let's see what we got over here. All right, we got one RW that came out and actually we're gonna talk about that going into the news. So we're gonna jump into the news over here. Now we've got two pieces of news that you really need to consider. One came out here at the end of November. Pretty big news. Transcode Therapeutics announces submission to the US FDA for planned first in-human clinical trial in patients with advanced solid tumors. Well, that's big news. I'm telling you what, folks. Cancer, tumors, one out of three people have it. And this is the thing. When you come up with a drug that there is nothing comparable to, if they came up with a drug that shrunk tumors really good, it would not have to go through that two-year phase one uh, trial. It wouldn't have to go through three or four more years of phase two and another five to seven years of phase three. Oh no, they would put this as an orphan fast-track drug and it would get put out there as fast as it could possibly be put out if it seems safe and seems to be working. So we don't have to consider it as a 10-year run for this drug. So that's pretty important news. But this is the news that probably has it running because I see this happen a lot. Transcode Therapeutics announces withdrawal of registration statement. That same piece of news we were looking at tells us that they announced today that it withdrew the registration statement form S1. This is the S1. You got to file one of these whenever you have a public offering, whenever you're going to put shares out in the market and start selling them, diluting all the other shares to all your other investors. This is how the company makes money if they don't have any big investors. Well, they were going to put out 12.5 million shares plus 12.5 million warrants. And warrants can be turned into shares later down the road. So we had about 25 million more shares that were going to be added onto this super nice low float. Ah, nobody was happy about that, obviously. So now they've taken it away and we have ourselves 133% gain. Though nothing's changed with the company, we're just not going to mess with that little tiny low float. We're going to keep it the same. And maybe, who knows, maybe they did find a big investor and don't have to come to the little investors to pay their bills. Because obviously they got, they got no money and they need some money in a big way. Let's go take a look at that chart. We are looking at RNAZ on TOS. That is Think or Swim. It's the free trading platform TD Ameritrade gives you just for signing up for their free trading account. And your only obligation to them, keep your account open. Duh. <laughs> and you can use this anytime you like. So we are looking at a six month, four hour chart for RNAZ. About six months ago, we had a high bubble of $3.40 and maybe a week ago, we had a low bubble of 37 cents. And right now we are just under a dollar at 98. She's been falling all this time. She had a couple of spikes through the 200, including today. She hasn't got any volume to talk about here and there. And that's all she's got. And the volume she had today was incredible. But you can see the news came out yesterday and it started running as soon as that news came out and has not stopped. Has come out from underneath all of her SMAs and is on top of her 200 on the four hour chart right now. And look at those technicals. There's something to behold, are they not? That PPO is shooting for the stars, just like the MACD. These two are cousins to each other. Our RSI was strong, had a big pullback, but is right there underneath the overbought right now. And my ADX, I'm liking the looks of this. ADX, it tells you when your trend on the chart is going to change. You see my trend right now is up. It's an uptrend without a doubt. And this is a straight line. 
when that line changes direction, doesn't matter if it's up or down, if it just changes direction, my trend has stopped as it was moving. So right now, everything looks really good on the four hour chart. Let's look at our 20 day, one hour. All right, 19 days, nothing to say. We can see that news came out, must have been right at the bell because she started at 42 cents. That's when the bell went off and she finished today, I don't know, somewhere around 75 cents. So she had about 35 cent jump before the day was even over and continued that climb pre-market today and hit a high of $1.17. From yesterday's close to today's high, you've got almost 300% gains. And we can see she has been falling her highs have been getting lower, but her lows have been getting higher. So we've been getting this pennant. It's like this, right? And the price is stuck in the middle. And when it gets to the point, well, normally a decision has to be made. It's gonna pop up or it's gonna pop down. And you can tell normally which way it's gonna pop by looking at your oscillators down here. Do they show strength or do they show weakness? Now let's look at our five day, five minute. Woo, lots of activity since the news came out. Must have come out right here. Took a nice jump straight across, another jump. When the bell came, she fell fast and hard. Hit her 200 day SMA, which is right where she started from. She respects it a lot. And went all the way to her high bubble from that point. Has crashed through her 50 day SMA, but has not got close to her 200. And she is fighting right now after market. Technicals aren't very strong on the five minute. I'll give you that much. Everything is in the wrong place, pointing the wrong direction. So I think this is probably all the run you're gonna see for not putting extra shares on the market. It's exciting, but they didn't make any money from it. They're still in the same boat unless they come out with the news press that says, we've got a private investor who's gonna place this much money into the company. That would be good news. But if that news came out, would it bounce again or would everyone say, ah, it's been built in? So I don't think this has a lot more run left in it right now, but they are working with tumors. Keep up with that FDA stuff. They could get a break. They could get their drug moved a lot quicker. And let me tell you what, cancer drugs fighting tumors, you want a home run, that's a home run. All right, let's be honest. How many of you tuned into this show just to see this stock? Uh-huh, that's what I thought. No problem, glad to have you here. This is ticker HNRC, Houston Natural Resources. Now the reason most of us are interested in this company, not that it's a shite company, no, the company's got a lot going for it. But what's happening right now is that they are issuing a dividend, a nice juicy dividend of $1.75 for every one share that you own of this company. You heard me right. Current price right now is 51 cents. And for every share you own, the company's gonna give you $1.75. Now there has been a lot of discussion amongst us investors. Is it cash or is it a stock? The company's put out maybe three press releases since March, I think it was, talking about this dividend. And they always repeat $1.75. That they say over and over again. They never talked about uplisting. They never mentioned NASDAQ. They never used the word ticker. They never had any ratio for a stock dividend. So we were discussing it. Is it cash or is it stock? Well, all of our questions are answered today. The company came out with a news press that was very explicit, full of all the details we need. So all of our answers are right there. And it's a good thing because I did call the company yesterday twice and I got their voicemail both times. So I never got to talk to anybody, but now it's really not necessary. Now, I'm not going to just jump into that news press. I want to look at the information about this company again, because if you've invested, you want to know what you've invested in. I know we're here for the dividend and that's great, but I think the company is a pretty decent company. So HNRC finished today at 51 cents with a gain today. People have started to notice this dividend. I think she is up over 18%. She's on the pink tier in current, and she does have both those green ticks I'm always telling you to look for, so she looks good. Now, the company is involved with natural resources and energy, and they are spinning off all of those non-energy assets into WDHI. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Yeah, people are taking notice. We jumped from a quarter million shares up to 1.5 million. Not a huge jump, but people are taking notice. Share structure on this. 
All right, they tell us we got 65 million outstanding shares and we got three different numbers here for our float. 39 million for unrestricted, which is normally where I go. 4 million for the float, which is what we're all hoping for. And 22 million here at DTC, which I really never use. Let's see what we got. It is 14.9 million jumping into their most recent financial disclosure. So there you go, 14, let's call it 15 million in the float. Not a bad float. Financials for HNRC. Well, look at that folks. Not only is she making money, but she's doubling up all the time she's doing it. She went from a half a million we know it's half a million because we got to put three zeros behind any of these numbers. Jump from a half a million to three million to nine million to 18 million. They're catching momentum. They're getting speed. They're starting to grow exponentially. What is it on the quarterly? Are they still making money? Oh, heck yeah. We got five, 10, 11, 14, 15, about $15 million the first three quarters of this year. So yeah, they're making some good money. Disclosures, we got anything new over here? I know we've been here before, but we'll look. No, we got nothing going on except that news. This just came out today. They simply call it the HNRC Update Shareholders on Dividend. That was enough to catch my attention. So this is the news. Everything we need to know is right here. Houston Natural Resources confirmed today that it will spin off its non-energy assets to a wholly owned subsidiary, Worldwide Diversified Holdings, Inc., and then dividend them to its shareholders. The dividend will be a stock dividend of common shares, they're not restricted, so you can trade them as soon as you get them, of Worldwide Diversified Holdings, Inc., ticker WDHI. The dividend date is for shareholders of record on December 16th. That is the date they'll record the information, but it takes two days after a purchase for it to get recorded. So you need to have your shares bought by December 14th. And the anticipated payment date is December 30th. How about that? Happy New Year's, a belated Christmas gift, subject to an effective registration statement. So we still have one more thing to do. We got our fingers crossed. Everything's gonna go through as we expect. The board of directors has approved the transfer of the non-energy investments of 53 million in exchange for common shares of worldwide diversified holdings. There's your value of the company, 53 million. That's the company you're getting shares in. Shareholders owning, HNRC shares through a broker or other nominee will have the WDHI dividend shares credited to their account to reflect the dividend and will not be required to take any action in connection with the transaction. Simply put, you're going to wake up and they're going to be there. WDHI, your shares. And by all rights, you should be able to sell them. Now, I don't know what the price of these shares are gonna be. It may come on the market at $5. What they're gonna do is take all of our shares and multiply them out. So if you got 100 shares, you're gonna have 100 times $1.75. So you're gonna have what, $175? Okay, that is gonna be given to you in shares. Whether it be $5 a share, $1 a share, $10 a share, they'll divide it up and you'll get that many shares to equal that amount of money. Now, I do anticipate that people are going to sell as soon as it hits the market. What are we all there for? The money. We want the dividend to sell it. Most of us aren't even interested in the company WDHI. We haven't even done any due diligence, right? So there probably is going to be a fall. Now, let's just take a worse for worse example. Maybe it falls 50%. Maybe it does. Whatever it falls, folks, whatever it is above zero, is your free bonus. Anything above zero is free money because your investment in HNRC is solid over here. The company's solid, they're making money, they're doing business, everything is good there. You don't have to worry about your investment. Matter of fact, you can sell that before the payment date. That's right. On December 17th, December 18th, you can sell your shares of HNRC and still, before you've gotten your dividend, know you're going to get your dividend. You just have to have them recorded on the 16th. After that, nobody's looking, nobody cares. So that is the way this is going to play out. So I feel good about holding my shares and even adding some more to my HNRC because anything 
that's over there is going to be bonus. And if the company's got anything going for it, if we actually did some DD on it, it could actually grow. After it falls, it could become a buy for a lot of people and start the climb. Wouldn't you hate to sell at half price and then see it triple because you just didn't want to wait? I mean, stranger things have happened. <laughs> Let's go take a look at that chart. We are looking at HNRC, six month, four hour chart. And I've got my channels drawn here across the top extremities here and my lower one. I just draw them right at the ends of the tips there. And you can see it is in there. It's just stuck bouncing around like a pinball. And the closer it got to the end, the more likely it was to pop. And that's all I was waiting for. And I didn't have to wait too long. Pop, we got it. The other line I got in there is the halfway point from the bottom of this surge to the top of that surge. You can find it using your Fibonacci or you can just do mathematically. I consider that algorithmically important. Now, I didn't line this up to anything, but you can see how the price just laid right on it in here and right in here. It does come into play. Our technicals, they show a lot of good going here. We had a lot of volume. Look at our PPO pushing up and our ADX pushing down. Now that is a pattern. When you have your, a your ADX underneath your PPO and you see the blue line going up and the red line going down, guaranteed 100% the price is going up. And we've got a split going right now. Our MACD is climbing and our RSI just crossed into the overbought and has a lot of heat. So everything is looking good on that four hour. 20 day, one hour. All right, so that is the top of the channel line and the one at the bottom is the bottom. It just gets real tight. And it's what right there is that 50% mark. And you can see how they, the prices are respecting all of these lines until today. Today she did break out of it and she pushed up to a high of 54 cents. Lots of volume, as I said, and our technicals on the one hour are just as hot. We are in the red, in the overbought in the RSI, and every single one of our oscillators is like a little puppy tail up in the air. Everything looks really happy. Five day, five minute. Steadily climbing up once she got on top of her 200. She has been respecting that 200, bouncing on it. She's pulling away right now. She has just crossed outside of that channel and look, she poured on the steam. Once she got outside the pen, like a dog getting outside when you leave the gate open, vroom, they're out of here. They just don't hang around. No, once it broke through, realized who was on the other side of the fence, it took off. Now it did fall back pretty quick and it went right back to climbing. So we had a high of 54 cents today and she closed at 51 cents. Our technicals are all pretty good. They're actually showing some strength right now. Now keep this in mind though. We aren't really worried about the price. Now that's not to say it's not relevant. Of course it is, but let's consider worst case scenario. Let's say this stock fell to a penny, one penny. And now, and let, let's say 50 cents. Let's say we bought it at 50 cents and it falls to a penny. We're getting $1.75 for every single share we own. If you lose 50 cents, that means you're still up a dollar and a quarter. Even if this stock went flat, but I don't expect this stock to go flat. No, worse come to worse, I think it'll just kind of hang right around here, 45, 50 cents. I think our investment is safe. And whatever happens with the dividend stock, WDHI, maybe it falls halfway. Well, anything over zero is free money. Maybe $1.75, who knows? Maybe the stock goes up as soon as it goes over there. We have no clue, but whatever you get, over there is free. So I really don't see how we can lose unless, unless they did a reverse split behind our backs as soon as we got the dividends. Something like that, God forbid. <laughs> but outside of that, I think it's safe. I'm gonna be building up my position, but you do as you think best. You are in control of your money. If you get involved, I wish you the absolute best. Hey, thanks, I appreciate it. All right, I didn't exactly expect to be talking about this stock, but what the hey, I think we can probably learn something from this. This was actually a hot stock today. Had a lot of trades, a lot of activity, had a lot of price gains all over a single tweet, which of course I'm gonna share with you in just a little bit. This is PD, PG Performance Drink Group. They finished the day almost two cents at 0.018 with over 157% gains. 
She's on the pink tear and current, got those two green ticks, looks great. They are a shell risk. That means that they're in business, but they're not making any money. Nobody likes that. It's not a good thing. So we would like to see that change in a hurry. So what does this company do? Well, their description tells us that Performance Drink Group is a manufacturer and retailer of performance sports beverages. They have also expanded now into what they call active drinks and alcoholic beverages as well. So what was the relative volume around this company's tweet? Look at that, folks. Impressive, right? Wow, how would you like your tweets to do that? We went from 362,000 shares to over 21 million. That's something like uh, 60, 60 times her normal volume. Pretty nice jump. Share structure. All right, we've got, uh, yeah, we wish it was 379,000. Whoa, now I'm gonna bet it's 34 since we've got it here twice. To be sure, we jump into their most recent financial disclosure and there we go. Public float is 34.1 million shares. Not a bad float, not a bad float. PDG's financials, ah, we got nothing here. And I'm not real sure why. Let's see if we get a balance sheet. No, cash flow, nada. All right, I did jump into their financial. I'll jump in it with you too. We can do it this way. Wasn't planning on doing this either. <laughs> Gotta roll with it, don't you know? Total assets for this company. They had $100,000 in the bank, but they've got $700,000 worth of liabilities. That's kind of normal for a startup company. Uh, revenue. Well, they're not making any money, so yeah, they're living up to their reputation of being a shell risk. But they're in business, so things cost them money. So they are down, well, $700,000 just being in business. What else can we learn over here? Let's check out their disclosures, see if they've got any new information sitting here for us. No. They've got no filing since January of 2022. I like to find the 8Ks and the S1s over here. They're short, brief, and normally have some good potent information. So there's gotta be some news, right? I mean, we know there's a tweet, but, but no, we haven't had any news since May, which is when they launched their new energy supplement beverage Pro Boost. Yeah, you, you know those five hour little drinks you can do that keep you awake for five hours, they've got their own. They've got one of those. And I think they might even have one for hangovers. I'm not sure, don't quote me on that one. So we've got nothing here. What we've got is that tweet. And I'm gonna forewarn you, the tweet isn't exactly what you expect. But the fact of the matter is, there's probably a reason for why there was such a strong reaction to it. Jumping over to Twitter. All right. This is Performance Drink Group's Twitter account. We're looking at, okay, let's just start right there. May 31st, a PDPG with a wide range of beverages in the market. Innovation is key. Consumers are gradually turning to beverage flavors. Sounds like an advertisement. That was their tweet back in May. Then we got another tweet here in May. 31st, and it looks like it's probably another advertisement, a commercial. Oh, here we got one seven hours ago. Their first one, first one since May. And there you go. Uh, <clears throat> is this on? Is this on? That's it, folks. That is the tweet. I'm not kidding you. That's the tweet. That's what got them 153% gains today. There is no news. There is no filings. There is, there's nothing going on. So, why do you think it jumped 153% on this? Because it's funny? Because it's cute? No, how about because it's signs of life? They haven't said anything to anybody since May. They're not making any money, they're a shell risk. That's the danger area. And now that the SEC is about ready to change the rules, I do believe that revenues is part of their criteria. So companies like they did before they changed the rules before are gonna try to get their boats all lined up, patch those holes, paint them. They're gonna try to get things right. So this is just a sign of life. It lives, and people were excited. We're not in an abandoned vessel. Somebody is at the helm. That's all I can come with. If you can come up with something else, put it down there and let me know.
Let's go take a look at the chart for this PDPG. Looks like we've looked at PDPG before. Why is that such a tongue twister for me? So we looked at this way back here at April, April 18th, and they talked to us in May. So this is still when they were talking to us. We were showing them respect. They were showing us respect. We got over the 50-day SMA, hit a high here of uh, 7.8 cents, hit a low here of 0006. Did get a little bump, but that's about it. We've just been going sideways ever since. Now our 200 was way the heck up here. Has taken a very, very long time to come all the way down and it is just now close enough. Now look, as soon as it got close enough, it, it was like a Venus flytrap. Just reached out there to grab it. Boink, first attempt. Like I said, you don't trust the first one to be the one to keep going. I mean, it happens, but not normally. That's normally the breaking of the ice. And the next time you come to it, ah, it's all broken and you can jump up on top. And that's what happened here. Broke the ice, got up underneath it and jumped. Whoa, what a jump. She is way up there. She started down here at uh, 0037. Let's just call it four. And it went up to Oh my God, 20, four to 20. Take away all the zeros, that's the way the math works out. You had a 500% gain in the last three days off of this stock. Technical show just that. She has been pushing up for three days, every single one of the oscillators. It all looks great. Looking at our 20 day, one hour view, we had more volume today than we did that first day, and it shows we had a strong climb all day long, and she was still pushing green into aftermarket hours. All of our SMAs are lining up nice. We just had a crossover on our 50-day going over the 200, getting into the right place. You should have the smallest at the top, and sequentially, they should come down. So that is now in the right place. We need to get this 200 hull, which probably isn't on your chart, over the 200-day SMA. What's the difference between them? The 200 day SMA takes 200 days, averages them together, puts a point on your chart. The 200 day haul does the same thing, but it gives a little more credence to current prices. So that price normally is closer to the price unless the price moves real quick and gets away from it as it did right now. So we'll probably see this 200 day haul across that 200 faster than the 50. Probably get right up in there real quick. Our technicals look excellent on the one hour. We are churning and burning up here in the RSI at 80. Our MACD and PPO are screaming up and a nice straight line means our trend is continuing. Everything looks really sweet over here. I'm drooling. Let's check out our five day, five minute. Lots of activity. You can see how much trading we had today relative to how much trading we had days before. There was our first bounce. She came down. Looks like she kept about 50% consolidated waited and then boom she launched again today and she's respecting the 20 day SMA that's the orange one you can see once she got on top of the 20 not even the 50 once she got on top of the 20 that's our first big bar she jumped when she comes down she doesn't come back to the 50 she comes back to the 20 that's her that's her puppet master is the 20 so we watch that right now it is coming back down towards the 20 she hit a high here of almost goodness gracious can't get any closer to two cents than she is right now at 0 0.0199 our technicals show everything is falling right now yeah they do on the five minute they do show everything is pushing down but we are in aftermarket hours and that is pretty much all the push we've had since do I think this is going to continue running? Well, <laughs> we don't have a catalyst, do we? The point is the company's alive. They've shown signs. They've opened their eyes after coming out of a long coma. And we don't know what they're going to say. Could be gibberish. Could just go back to sleep. We don't know. You know, maybe their son got on there and posted that. <laughs> 
And we don't know. So if you're curious and you've got room on your watch chart, maybe put PDPG up there. But what we learn here, folks, is that when a company has been very quiet, I mean, they have a Twitter account. Is there any reason for them not to have been communicating to their investors? I know going through a news press is a little, you know, that's formal, but talking on Twitter, they could have at least been keeping touch. And I think that's all this really is. Now, maybe there could be more. I wasn't expecting this off of that. So I might get double surprised tomorrow and see it run even sillier. Stranger things have happened. <laughs> Well, I hope you're not feeling disappointed because all three stocks weren't hot for more gains. I mean, they were hot today. Not that HNRC was hot today, but it's hot, right? You got $1.75 for every single share that you buy. No matter how you slice this, which is what I'm trying to show you, it looks like we're gonna come out ahead. Now, PDPG, hey, I said it easy that time. Well, a silly old tweet got 153% gains. What can I say? I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, but darn, you can see the value of communication even when it's worthless. And Arnaz, well, you know, there is a excitement about not putting shares on the market. We saw that excitement. Should there be any more? Well, if they come out with the news press that says they got money from somewhere else, maybe maybe but as you can see stocks run for a lot of different reasons not all of them make sense and some of them i never show you there's just nothing to show you that's why i don't show them to you and you'll probably find that when you start doing dd more and more and more it is kind of fun honestly it is remember folks the more you know the more you're gonna grow see ya